Okay, welcome back to vertical projectile motion. So, uh, what we've previously seen is that we spoke about case one. Case one we called the drop case, everybody. Uh, that was case one, the case in which something is dropped. Okay, and then we spoke about case two, uh, which is over here. Case two was where we throw up from a reference point and it goes up to a maximum height and then it comes back to the exact same height. So it goes up from here and it goes to maximum height there and then from that height it comes down again in an exact same straight line. Okay, then over here we've got oops, over here we've got case 3. Case 3 we said it goes up, remember the hot air balloon, the guy drops his camera, it goes up first and then it comes down. Similarly, the case can be represented by something that I called case 3a, if you remember, and case 3b. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the three cases and ask you to uh, start looking at some of the example questions and so forth and we will use these cases to answer the questions. Okay. Now very importantly, whenever you get a question that relates to case number 3, I'd like you to draw out the entire motion for case 3a and case 3b. And then we'll see based on the uh, question itself, which would be more appropriate to use when solving. Okay, right, so let's move forward. <clears throat> now, we are dealing with an important section. It's called uh, the equations of uniformly accelerated linear motion. And the equations of uniformly accelerated linear motion uh, comes into play when we are dealing with solving uh, these questions. Now, there's a few things to note. Firstly, these are equations uh, of motion. Secondly, they are of uniformly accelerated linear motion. That's a big thing there. Uniformly accelerated linear motion. Okay. And what exactly is uniformly accelerated linear motion? Linear, as you know, is something going in a straight line. So the motion we're dealing with is simply motion that's going up in a straight line and coming down in the same straight line. Okay. Like I'm doing over there. Unfortunately, my lines aren't that straight. Okay, accelerated linear motion. Uniformly accelerated is the next big word over there. Um, uniformly accelerated. That means the acceleration does not change from point to point. It's not speeding up and then it decides to accelerate even more. It's at a constant rate of change. Okay, that's what we mean by uniformly accelerated motion. So the equations of uniformly accelerated motion... Um, in solving virtual projectile motion uh, questions, we will use the equations of uniform accelerated linear motions, and these are the same formulae that you used for linear motion in free fall that you studied in grades 10 and 11. Now, there's a few things to note. The definitions, Vf stands for the final velocity over there. V initial stands for the initial velocity over there. Um, delta x, also delta y, if you rotate your axes, is the height above the ground. Time is t. The time interval is delta t, okay? And I don't think we're going to worry too much with the difference between t or delta t in this case. Um, and then we'll also have acceleration due to gravity, little g, that we've previously seen. Okay, so I'm going to move forward now and see how we can use the equations of uniformly accelerated motion. Now, there's one last thing. Many of your teachers may have told you that you check for four quantities. You see what you have, you have this, you have that, and you have that, and so forth. We're not going to bother much with that. What we are going to do is we are going to draw out the cases, right? And then once we draw out the cases, we will look at what the question wants, and then we'll choose a formula based on what we don't have. So, for example, if the question asks for delta x, but we don't have time, then we choose a formula that has delta x, like that one over there, but does not have time, okay? Because in an examination, you don't have the time to tick, I have that, I have that, I have that, I don't have that. Let me see the next one. No. You say, okay, I have everything. What I don't have is delta x. That's what I want. And what I don't have is time. So I choose the formula without time. Okay, that's the strategy for choosing a formula. Right. So let's go to the next page. Here's our first intro practice question. And what we're going to look at, um, I'm going to give you a basic strategy for solving such questions, and here's the strategy. So the strategy is as follows. Okay, our strategy will be, oops, that looks a little bit crazy. The strategy 
to solve VPM problems. Now, as any good strategy in physics would, would have, um, I'd say number one is read the question. Read the question. Number two, mm, number two is identify the case. Now, for our purposes, most cases, what we've done in case one, two, and three will be the bulk of vertical projectile motion questions. About 85% of the questions you receive in grade 12 are based on my three cases. There's a few things where you have to put one or two cases together to get a new case. So we're not doing that. Those are like composite cases. And I'll do. I'll show you examples of those questions. But the bulk, 80, 80 to 90% of your vertical projectile motion questions uh, form the first three cases. So firstly, you've got to read the question. The second thing you've got to do is identify the case. The third thing you want to do after identifying the case is... Um, draw a diagram okay so draw a diagram uh, once you've drawn a diagram and of course and fill in everything I want to say fill in the info right and you'll see as I take you through the process so read the question identify the case draw a diagram and fill in all the info um, and then you proceed by answering the questions Okay, I think before that, uh, and as part of the third step, is choose a reference system. Okay, you can do it either in the third step, system. Five is answer the questions. Okay, so you do these things before the questions even come. Okay, very important. Answer the questions. Okay. So I apologize for my grade 1 handwriting or grade R handwriting, but there you have it. Okay, so the strategy is read the question, identify the case, draw a diagram and fill in the info, and choose a reference system either in 3 or 4. You can switch those two around. It's totally up to you. And then number 5 is answer the questions. Okay, so now let's go back uh, to what we have over here. So this is our first practice question that we see. A ball is thrown upwards with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. So this isn't exactly case 1. It is not exactly the full case 2, but it's part of case 2. In other words, it goes up, but does it come all the way down again? Or I'm sure it comes down, just we're not concerned with the downward motion. Determine the maximum height reached above the thrower's hand. Determine the time it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height. So let's first quickly draw a diagram, right? We read the question. Um, it's like case 2, it's thrown up from a certain reference point. We're not concerned with the whole case 2, so just the beginning thereof. So let's choose a nice shape over there. Um, let's get a blue line, and let's say my line is like so, and I throw it up. And presumably it's going up from that point and it's coming down again. But all we are concerned with right now is the upward motion. Okay, there's an important word that you can see there is thrown upwards. Now when we throw something, we apply a force initially and therefore it leaves our hand with a certain initial velocity, vi. Vi is over there, and it's equal to some velocity. Vi is upward, so it has to be a positive value. We don't exactly know which value. Um, G is acting on it. Very bad of me. I'm going to include our reference system there on top. Upwards is positive, downwards is negative, right? G is equal to minus 9 comma 8 on our diagram that's a constant that we know about meters per second I'm going to leave out the unit for now the final velocity at the top when it reaches the maximum height is 0 meters per second okay let's just put in brackets here that's at max height right um, there's three quantities what am I missing time time is acting on the object we don't know its value. And then we've also got delta y or delta x, which is the full length over there. Okay, which we also don't know, but we are assured that that value is going to be positive because the displacement is from this point to that point over there. Now, let's determine the maximum height, the maximum height reached above the thrower's hand. Uh, so what does the question want? The question is asking, I'm going to write over there, asking for... It's asking for delta y or delta x, okay? It's asking for delta y or delta x. What don't we have? 
we've got gravity, we've got that, we've got, we've got a lot of stuff, but we don't have time and we don't have initial velocity. So this is a tricky question because this one, we have to choose a formula that does not have initial velocity and all the formulae have got initial velocity. So we need to first get the initial velocity. So let's choose a formula where we want initial velocity but we don't have time in order to get to delta y. Okay, let's get the initial velocity. We don't have time, so where's a formula without time? Actually, I made a terrible mistake there. In fact, that was very bad. And I'm sure you've seen it by now that we do have the initial velocity because we threw it up with 10 meters per second. So this is a fault where we don't read the questions properly specifically me in this case. Anyway, so we've got 10 meters per second and it's positive. Okay, they're asking for delta y, we don't have time. So is there a formula that doesn't have time? Yes, this formula over here. So we're going to choose the formula that doesn't have time. And the formula is vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2g delta x or delta y as we've represented it over there. Now, we've got all the quantities. What we want is delta y, but we don't have uh, time, so that's how we chose the formula. Let's solve it. So, it's equal to vi squared, right? And I'm going to solve it like this first. Take vf squared minus vi squared, right? Divided by 2 times g, and then substitute, because this is a very important thing. With some algebra, you'll see that that's, if you take over the v square, uh, vf squared, Subtract vi squared from both sides, you get the top, then divide this term by 2g, and that's what you get. Now let's substitute. It's going to be vf squared, which is 0, minus vi squared, which is going to be 10, positive 10 to the power of 2, divided by 2, multiplied by minus 9.8. Okay, and then we will get an answer and I'll write it over here shortly. Okay, so let's type that into the calculator quickly. We're going to have uh, minus 100 as the numerator divided by negative 19.6 meters per second. And then they give us a 5,1 meters as the displacement. 5,1 meters. Let's just write it over there, 5.1 meters is delta y. Okay, it is a vector quantity, um, but they wanted the height, so it's technically you can just say it's 5.1 meters. The displacement as given over there is 5,1 meters. Um, right, I'm just going to clear the page and I'm going to assume that we're starting from scratch again, and then I'm going to draw this diagram and uh, just leave and, and insert the last part here as well. Okay, so let's get a new page quickly. So on this page, um, a ball is thrown upwards, initial velocity. We've already said this is case number two uh, of sorts, where I'm going upwards like that. Uh, let's fill in each of our quantities again. Always draw this first. Again, reference system you have on top. You don't have to do this twice. I'm just doing it twice so that you get accustomed to drawing it out. Okay. If you've already drawn the diagram, then that's perfect. V initial is equal to 10 meters per second upwards. V final we know is equal to zero. We know little g is equal to minus 9,8. Okay, you want this to be second nature, and you can get it done in uh, less than a minute, or like 20 seconds. Time, we don't have, so I'm going to put it on this side. We don't know its value, but we've just recently calculated delta y to equal 5.1 meters. Okay, that's meters per second squared, um, and that's meters per second. Right. Okay, so the next question wants to determine the time it takes uh, the ball to reach its maximum height. In other words, what's the time for the ball to go from year to year? Now, let's assume we didn't have delta y. Let's assume we didn't have delta y. Now, I tell you, if in the absence of this figure over here, let's just say that's not there, you want to choose a formula. Again, you've got everything. What, what do you want? You want time. So you need to choose a formula that has time. But let's assume you don't have delta y, so you choose a formula that doesn't have delta y, or in our case for the formula delta x. So we'll choose the first one. 
But because we've got all the quantities, we could choose any one. But let's just say we didn't have delta y. So let's choose this formula here. Okay. So Vf is equal to Vi plus Gt. Right. And we want to solve for the time. So it's going to be Vf minus Vi divided by G will give us the time. Vf is 0 minus 10 meters, positive 10, divided by negative 9,8, and that gives us t, and in our case, this t will equal to, let's put that in on the calculator, that's just saying 10 divided by 9,8, and that's going to give you 1,02 seconds, 1.02 seconds, there we go, time is 1.02 seconds. Okay, so I hope that example helped. Remember the strategy that we've spoken about? Uh, as you can see, the strategy over there is read the question, identify the case, draw a diagram and fill in the info. Always have your reference system present and then answer the questions. Remember how you choose a formula. You f draw your diagram. You see what you want. You see what you want. You see what you want. And what you don't have. Then you choose a formula that has what you want, but it doesn't have what you don't have. Okay.